I have taught grades second through fifth grade, two years in Hillsboro area, and then I moved to McMinnville after that second year, and I've been in McMinnville ever since. I found myself still with that same passion for mathematics, then getting engaged in um, presenting like workshops to other school districts. And um, so I started to kind of have this passion for teaching adults too. And uh, what I found was is that I loved working with adults, but I really miss the school environment. I really miss being around children and just kind of the energy inside an elementary school. And so I came back. I never thought I wanted to be a principal until I guess I started getting all of those other experiences where um, I was kind of seeing the bigger picture, um, having this passion for working with adults but children also. And so I started exploring the idea of being an elementary school principal and started taking those courses. So the summer before my first year as principal, I spent a lot of time analyzing the study by Doug Reeves, which is the 90-90-90 schools. And I borrowed a lot of ideas, but my biggest borrow was the idea of having laser-like focus on student achievement. There's a lot of things in education that can kind of distract you from the goals. And so I work really hard as a principal to, to kind of be the filter for those kinds of things. And so I really try to minimize disruptions for teachers. I try to provide as much support as I can so that they can have laser-like focus on their instruction and what they do best, which is providing quality instruction to students and, and do their job. When she has a way of being so calm, even when things are chaotic. Stephanie has her eyes on the vision. She doesn't waver. It's, she knows where she's headed, she knows what, what, what's happening, and it doesn't matter what the drama of the day is, if you will, she's, she's headed slow and steady towards that, towards that goal. One of the things that we've worked really hard at Buell um, is to develop partnerships with the community. And one of our strongest partnerships is with Linfield College, which happens to be right in our backyard. And so when you're at Sue Buell Elementary School, you'll see Linfield students here every single day, and several of them. We work really closely with some volunteers from Cooperative Ministries that work with us and help us with things like school supplies, um, coats in the winter, they knit hats and gloves and scarves for students for us. Another partnership that we have is with Lutheran Family Services to help provide families and students with outside counseling needs that they might um, have. And so we know them by name, they know us by name, we make referrals to them. Sometimes they'll even come to the school and meet with families and children, and so we work very closely with them as well. So today we're having a special event called the Parade of Graduates. The high school seniors will be getting on buses today. They will come and we will be out in the hallways. Uh, they will be wearing their caps and gowns and we will be lining the hallways and playing the graduation march as they parade through and we'll be cheering and kids will have signs and it'll just be a great day of celebration for them. Our theme this year is grit. At the end of last year, we analyzed our data and our um, outcomes for students. And say we were looking at the students that met or exceeded on their Oaks assessment. Sometimes students were meeting and maybe not reading at grade level, but they were able to meet that assessment and vice versa. Sometimes we were having kids that we thought should have met on the Oaks assessment, but did not. And when we started looking at who they were, this idea of grit surfaced. This, we found that sometimes it, we think that that student achieved, even though they weren't quite reading at grade level, because they had that effort. They have tenacity, they know how to persevere. So we decided this year to really embrace that idea of grit and um, to foster grit in our students. And we've really been celebrating grit. So when we see a student persevering, when we see them not giving up, we point that out and we really celebrate that because we feel like that's gonna be that one extra thing that's gonna help them achieve, but then also to be very successful in life forever. So my first graders were sharing with me why they felt um, Mrs. Legard was a wonderful principal. Um, and some of the things they had to say was that she helps our school solve problems. She's a giving person. She keeps us safe. One boy said that she lets anybody come to Buell School that wants to learn. She thinks that all students are sweet, which I thought was a really neat quote. She's kind to us and she lets us have fun at school. So I thought coming from first grader, that was a pretty, pretty good way to describe Mrs. Leegard.
I brought note cards just in case, but I think I've got lots of good things I want to say, and I, I just want to make sure I don't leave anybody out. So, oh, somebody told me, actually right down there, that it was going to be hard to come up here and speak after watching the video about myself and my school for the first time, and that person was right. This is tough. Um, I want to start by thanking COSA for providing the opportunity to recognize um, some of the great work that happens around the state. Every year I look forward to these videos, and um, I'm always very inspired by them, so thank you for that. Uh, Jeff Hart was the person from Allied um, who came to my school to shoot the video. And um, at one point during the interview, I remember asking him, so when do I get to give all my thank yous? And you're going to put that on tape. And he said, oh, no, your chance to do that is at COSA. So I'm going to make sure that I start with some of my thank yous. And I first want to start by thanking... Um, Actually, okay, yes. So first I want to start by thanking uh, Dr. Mary Alice Russell, Superintendent of McMinnville School District. People said I wouldn't be able to see anybody, but I can see her, she's right there. <laughs> so Dr. Russell believed in me, one of her elementary school principals, and she gave me this, or elementary school teachers, and gave me this opportunity to be an elementary school principal. Um, I'm so very grateful that she has very, well, I should say extremely high expectations. Um, and what this does is it drives me to work even harder than I'm already driven to work. I am also very um, grateful that she values ongoing professional development and requires that of every administrator in the district. Next, I want to thank my administrative colleagues, which are all sitting down there. Um, I've learned so very much from each and every one of you, and I truly appreciate and actually quite honestly count on our collaborative and supportive spirit, so thank you for that. My Sioux Beale Elementary staff and students and families are not here today, um, but I also want to thank them. As you can see a little bit from the vi video, Sioux Beale Elementary School is a very special place. Um, I believe that I'm up here today because I played a small part in creating a school climate and culture wherein everyone, all 62 staff members at Sioux Beale Elementary School, from custodians to the kitchen staff, to ed assistants, to the teachers, to the specialists, we all believe that all students can achieve academic excellence. And even more important, all of us believe that it's what we do. It's the actions of teachers and staff and school leadership that has the greatest impact on achievement. While it's easy sometimes to blame student engagement and achievement on variables such as lack of parent support or um, poor nutrition or home language, and although these variables can certainly play a part in, and have an impact on learning, at Sioux Buell, we believe that we have an even greater impact. And how did we get to this collective efficacy? Well, the whole journey would take me a while, and I know I don't have a while. So, but in summary, first we started by having the conversation. And that sounds really simple, but that's actually not so simple. So we started with the conversation. Then we looked at the research. And then we looked at data from other schools that are like ours. Um, Quickly, the demographics, some of the demographics of Sioux Buell, we have 85% free and reduced lunch, 52% uh, are Hispanic, about 42% are English learners. So we looked at schools like us that were making it happen. And then we started engaging in the data team process, and it's through this process that it truly became evident that student outcomes are a direct result of teacher practice. So this collective belief combined with our laser-like focus on standards and research-based instructional strategies, empowers my staff to ensure that all students achieve at very high levels. And as you saw in the video, it takes a lot of grit, tenacity, perseverance, ability to never give up to operate like this. Because if something we try isn't successful, it's going to take something else that we're going to try to be successful. So you just have to keep on trying and find the right thing to meet the needs of the student. So we call ourselves gritty at Sioux Buell Elementary School, and we're teaching, as you saw, our students to be the same. So I want to conclude by um, introducing and thanking my family for being here today, for their love and support. They're all down there. I think you should all wave. There they are. Thank you for being here. Um, <laughs> Down there, I'm going to point out a couple of them. One is my husband and very best friend, Jay, and my two sweet, kind, bright, brilliant, beautiful daughters, Rachel and Allie. Um, there's one, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> 
there's one character trait that we all share, which is a good one, I think, but it's that we never like to miss out on anything fun, which as you can imagine, with all of us never wanting to miss out on anything fun, we're incredibly busy people. Um, yet, it's, it's always a priority in our family to make sure that we set aside very quality time for each other, and um, we love being together. So thank you for that. And although these two short and sweet last words won't seem funny to any of you, it's a little joke between Jay, Allie, Rachel, and I, but thank you.